you've just put the finishing touches on your Common App personal statement. You've got 100 Spotify playlists lined up, and Netflix has just added all of your favorite 90s teen movies. You're just about to swear off ever writing another essay again when... Wait, what? What are these other essays the University of Michigan says I have to complete? How many questions is Tufts asking me to respond to? What is this evil folly? These are the supplemental essays, a curse placed on both the houses of students and admissions officers alike. If you recall, we referred to the supplemental essays in earlier chapters as gremlins. There are a lot of them, they can be annoying, and you definitely shouldn't feed them after midnight. The good news is that the strategies you have honed in chapters 3 through 6 of this series are often directly applicable to the writing of these supplements. The bad news is that there are a hell of a lot of supplements to deal with, an increasing number every year. Still, in this chapter, we will clarify the purpose and strategy behind writing a few of the most popular types of supplemental essays. Did you know you have burning questions about supplemental essays? We did, and we're excited to answer them. What is a supplemental essay, and why does it matter? What are the most common supplemental essay topics, and how do I answer them? What do I do if they throw me an oddball? Are there secrets to crafting a good short answer? What is the additional info essay? How can I organize my supplemental essay prompts for maximum efficiency? What if a school I apply to is not on the Common App? And where do I even find these magic prompts? Let's address your first question about supplemental essays and why they matter, which can also be rephrased as, why, why are they doing this to me? Contrary to popular opinion, admissions boards all over the country aren't sitting around long conference tables laughing evil laughs as they conjure up additional ways to torture you and eat up all your spare time. Believe it or not, these supplemental essays actually serve a purpose. As the overall undergraduate applicant pool grows, as it has been every year for the past two decades, colleges have struggled to find reliable ways to distinguish the students who are passionately committed to their institutions from the ones who are on the fence or just applying because my guidance counselor told me to. Most supplemental essay assignments are designed both to gauge a student's interest in the school and determine where a student might fit into a school's particular community. Typically, these essays focus more on future academic and professional goals, school-related activities, and your role in your current community than they do on self-reflection and creativity, though incorporating those elements is always encouraged. And while the number and complexity of these essays does seem to grow every year, there are a few usual suspects that regularly appear in the lineup. Let's start by discussing those garden-variety hobgoblins and how to approach them. A recent University of Michigan prompt asked applicants to describe the unique qualities that attract you to the specific undergraduate college or school, including preferred admissions and dual degree programs, to which you are applying at the University of Michigan. How would that curriculum support your interests? Georgia Tech has asked, beyond rankings, location, and athletics, why are you interested in attending Georgia Tech? NYU's supplement has presented students with the following. We are particularly interested in knowing what motivated you to apply to NYU and, more specifically, why you have applied or expressed interest in a particular campus, school, college, program, and or area of study. You may be focused, undecided, or simply open to the options within NYU's global network. Regardless, we want to understand why NYU. These prompts and so many others you will encounter on your supplemental essay safari yield what we at College Essay Academy call the why essay. Schools are essentially asking, why do you really want to go here? But this shape-shifting question can come in many forms as it attempts to solicit information like, what will you do when you get here? How will you take advantage of all the resources our school has to offer? How will the school support your academic or professional goals? And how do your past experiences or future goals support these claims? It's likely that many schools to which you apply will ask these questions in slightly different ways and with a wide range of word limits. Why essays can be tricky because they can quickly veer into incredibly generic territory. No matter what, there are two essential components to a successful why essay. In-depth knowledge of a school and a convincing demonstration of personal interest. 
Both of these elements require that you actually know what any given institution has to offer. And you know what this means. Hooray! It's time for research! The amazing news about doing research in the internet age is that you don't have to visit a school to become intimately familiar with its campus, curriculum, and culture. Whether you have to write a Y essay for a school or not, you should spend at least an hour or two immersed in its website trying to get a feel for what the school is all about and combing for reasons you might be interested in attending. This, of course, is extra important if the school you're exploring does assign a Y essay. Showcasing your knowledge of and interest in a school's offerings on a highly specific level is crucial and separates the truly impassioned from the perfunctory applicants. As you run through the website, poke around the departments you think you might want to join. Is there something specific in the curriculum that calls out to you? A professor's name that you recognize? Are you excited there is a super active volunteering community? Maybe you want to join the school's A-class a cappella group or participate in the freshman class's 100-year-old tradition of putting on furry onesies and studying outside in the snow during the week before finals. To our knowledge, this is not an actual tradition at any university, which is kind of a shame. And for those of you lucky enough to visit the schools to which you are applying in advance of writing your essays, take full advantage. Hop on a campus tour and ask your tour guide questions. Do not ask them where the best parties are. Don't worry, you'll find them. Take down your tour guide's name and ask for an email address so you can follow up with questions. Make friends with someone in the cafeteria. Notice how the campus makes you feel and try and reflect on why you are feeling those feelings. What does the campus look and smell like? What did you eat there? Was there an exciting lab you discovered or a mock newsroom you would love to have access to? After you complete your visit or research session, and we mean right after, Take a few minutes to jot down notes on everything so you remember the important details when you sit down to write a month after you visit. You might even, dare we say it, want to devote a formal free write to each school. When you wrote your Common App essay, we asked you to get specific about yourself. Well, now is the time to get specific about the school. If you can insert the name of any other school into your essay, you are not being detailed enough. And we know we shouldn't have to say this, but don't plagiarize. If you find a class that interests you, talk about it in your own words. Don't just use the word-for-word class description. Give admissions a little, or a lot, of credit. They know what their websites and catalogs sound like. Once you have a solid map of your school-specific interests, it's time to turn the lens back on your experiences. It's one thing to say you want to join the elite marine biology program, but it's much more convincing if you can also mention you spent a summer on Cape Cod studying the migration patterns of humpback whales, or that you write a blog about your favorite deep-sea current events. See what we did there? Don't expect admissions to make the connection between your transcript, activity list, and interest in their school. Build the bridge for them. In summary, when it comes to the Y essay, as with so many admissions essays, Details are important. What piques your particular interest in the school? The why essay, whether it's 100 words or 500 words, should clearly demonstrate the connection between the school's characteristics and your own unique qualities and experiences. In the biz, we call that your fit. Another common supplemental troll is the activity essay, which is an excellent opportunity to expand beyond the Common App's short activity descriptions. Colleges want to know the motivations behind your participation and your level of commitment to the enterprises you deem most important. How has this activity had an impact on your life? How has participation in this activity affected the lives of others? Maybe your membership in speech and debate served as the inspiration for your future pursuit of a law degree. Did your after-school volunteer work at an animal shelter bring new furry family members into the lives of your friends and family? Has playing the guitar since you were five years old shown you the power of dedication and allowed you the thrill of taking part in your own garage band? This is also an excellent place to highlight your leadership skills, teamwork, and drive. But remember, show, don't tell, if you have the space. Describing how your role as captain improved communication among your cheerleading teammates is much more effective than telling admissions you are a great leader. The community essay is another standard supplemental rascal that mines for information about your social habits and favorite causes. Prompts that ask about a community you belong to often leave themselves open to interpretation. 
Are you part of a community of sports fans around the world who can connect with other strangers over the amazing play in a recent game? Maybe you belong to a group whose mission is to provide clean water to people around the world. One of Duke's prompts provides a great example of how a community essay might be worded. Duke University seeks a talented, engaged student body that embodies the wide range of human experience. We believe that the diversity of our students makes our community stronger. If you'd like to share a perspective you bring or experiences you've had to help us understand you better, perhaps related to a community you belong to, your sexual orientation or gender identity, or your family or cultural background, we encourage you to do so. Real people are reading your application, and we want to do our best to understand and appreciate the real people applying to Duke. As with every essay you ship off to admissions, think about something you want admissions to know that hasn't been represented. What can you expand upon to show your versatility, passion, and ability to connect with the world around you? So those are three of the most commonly assigned supplements. What do you do if one of the schools you're applying to throws you an oddball? There are certain schools, like the University of Chicago, who have always taken a special pride in developing crafty questions for their applicants to answer. In recent years, more schools are jumping on the bandwagon, luring students to their applications with questions like, what does YOLO mean to you? This is both fun and exhausting for applicants who are grateful for an injection of modern, quirky inspiration, but whose creative wells are, at this point, running dry. We're right there with you. And again, we're going to help. Let's look at a couple of these oddball questions together. Consider this example from a recent U of Chicago batch of prompts. The ball is in your court. A penny for your thoughts, but say it, don't spray it. So long as you don't bite off more than you can chew, beat around the bush, or cut corners, writing this essay should be a piece of cake. Create your own idiom and tell us its origin. You know, the whole nine yards. P.S. A picture is worth a thousand words. Or, what is square one and can you actually go back to it? Breathe. You know how to do this. Consider the question that is being asked and then dig back into your repertoire of subjects you haven't yet discussed. Maybe it's as black and white as a panda is your shorthand for talking about things that are more dynamic and complex than they initially seem. After all, pandas aren't just black and white, they're also endangered and adorable. Is square one the moment before you catch a wave and is the fact that you can go back there again and again one of the things you love most about surfing? Is square one life before you discover jazz? Culling your own interests and passions will help a lot for these questions. Or take this option from UVA's supplements. What is your favorite word and why? Is your favorite word triple soy caramel latte because when you worked at Starbucks last summer, your favorite customer, Loretta, age 90, ordered one every day, sparking your friendship? Maybe your favorite word is hamburger. You tell us why. The trick to these essays is so simple, you're going to kick yourself when we say it. Start early. Brainstorming time is key for cracking the code to these puzzles. Read through the prompts that have been thrown at you and remember what you learned in Chapter 3. Go outside. Live your life. The ideas will come. Maybe even go back to your Common App free writing ideas and scour for unused subject matter. You have so many stories to tell. And now you get to tell even more of them, thanks to the supplemental essays. But not so fast. There's one other popular format for supplemental questions. Short answers. These little critters provide a different kind of creative challenge for aspiring college-goers. Take this set of short answer questions from a recent Yale supplement. Who or what is a source of inspiration for you? If you could live for a day as another person, past or present, who would it be? Why? You are teaching a Yale course. What is it called? Most Yale freshmen live in suites of four to six students. What would you contribute to the dynamic of your suite? 250 characters is not a lot of characters, which means the challenge of answering these questions lies half in generating honest, unique, and clever ideas, and the other in being concise. Humorous answers can also have a heavy impact here. Our advice to you? Over-brainstorm and overwrite. Think of as many ideas as you possibly can for each short answer and get them all on the page. When narrowing down your choices, 
think about representing a range of your personality traits and interests. If you say the overlap of food and science excites you intellectually, don't say you will bring an immersion circulator into your dorm room to cook ramen for your roommate sous vide, though that would be awesome, please be our roommate. Use that space to elaborate on something totally new that admissions officers might enjoy knowing. Once your general plan for your answers is solidified, you will be able to cut and condense your way under the limit. It is not much discussed, but the common application offers students the opportunity to complete another essay in addition to the personal statement. No, this is not a random bonus round. This space is reserved for additional info, and while it is tempting to use it to explore another random subject of your choosing, students should use it sparingly. With that in mind, let's take a look at the instructions. Please provide an answer below if you wish to provide details of circumstances or qualifications not reflected in the application you may enter up to 650 words. In other words, unless you have something crucial to add or explain, and there is absolutely nowhere else on the application for you to write about it, you should skip this essay. Think about it. If you were an admissions officer, would you really want to read more than one Common App essay per applicant? Still, this space is useful for students whose high school career has been affected by a major life event or circumstance and who don't want to use the personal essay to tell that story. Did an illness during your sophomore year cause an overall drop in your GPA? Do you have a learning difference that wasn't diagnosed until your freshman year? A drop in grades and the reason behind it does not define you. Write about it in the additional information section and use the personal statement to paint a bright picture of the things that do. Let's do a quick pulse check. Is your heart racing? Is your head spinning? Are you already drowning in an ocean of your own sweat? Don't worry. We swear it's not really that bad. We're here to introduce you to your friend, Overlap. We started this chapter off discussing some of the more common themes and subjects explored in supplements. Even outside of the why essay, activity essay, and community essay, you are going to find a lot of overlap between your supplemental essay prompts. In order to tackle these essays as efficiently and effectively as possible, we suggest that before you brainstorm a single word, you collect every supplement required of you and organize. For example, it's likely you have to write three separate why essays for three different schools. Which one is the longest? Start there. When you're done, can you edit the essay to suit the next school in line and cut the essay based on the shorter word count? You don't have to reinvent the wheel. But if you're using the same essay as a base for various supplements, make sure you change out your references appropriately. There is nothing like a beautifully written essay that ends with, and that is why I belong at Vassar, to get the Bates admissions officer shaking her head and tossing you into the rejection pile. Once you finish attacking your why essays, Round up your activity essays and, again, tackle the longest one first. By the time you make your way to your community essays, oddballs, and schools off the common app, you will be warm and ready for your most creative brainstorming. Keep a running list of your ideas and, again, gun for your longest remaining supplement early in the process. By the time you reach your final handful of oddball questions, you will likely have a stack of ideas to comb through, since you never throw anything out, and a ton of drafts to mine for fully polished content. Subjects from finished essays may even be usable if you simply look at them through a different lens. Maybe apply a metaphor or a mechanism. The trick is staying organized and approaching these essays without fear. As we mentioned way back in Chapter 2, many schools that aren't on the Common Application assign essays that are very similar in nature to the Common App's personal statement. For example, the University of California often asks something along these lines. What is the one thing you think sets you apart from other candidates applying to the University of California? The answer to this can definitely be backed into whatever prompts the Common App chooses to throw at you. Often, admissions boards at non-Common App schools give you glorious gifts that allow you to repurpose your Common App essay with little to no revision, like this prompt from Georgetown. As Georgetown is a diverse community, the admissions committee would like to know more about you in your own words. Please submit a brief essay, either personal or creative, which you feel best describes you. Otherwise, prompts that are not on the Common App can be treated just like the rest of your supplements. 
Line them up with the rest of the essays on your list. Do a little dance when you find direct overlap with a why or activity or oddball essay. And wait to see what other ideas float to the top of the pile as you knock out the rest. Now that we've convinced you to dive headfirst into a pool of varied but manageable supplemental essays, where do you even find these things? Usually, you can find the supplements in one of two places. If your school is on the Common App, they should be available under each school when the application goes live, usually around August 1st. But be warned, occasionally schools wait to release their supplements until after the Common App release date, so don't simply assume that if a supplement isn't listed, that one isn't required. Instead, make sure you check the second source for supplemental prompts, the school websites. This is the most reliable place to find information about a school's supplemental essay requirements. The prompts are often listed in the admissions section or on a school's admission-specific blog. In many cases, schools release their supplemental essay questions well in advance of the Common App Live date, so keep your eyes peeled and your ears perked. The admissions section of school websites is also the place you want to look for essay questions if you're applying to a school that isn't affiliated with the Common Application. Basically, you're going to become the master of admission searches on the whole entire internet. We will award you a virtual trophy accordingly. Look at you. You've come so far. You've learned how to slay the common application essay dragon. You know how to knock out every supplemental gremlin with ease. You are an admissions essay warrior ready for battle. But wait, it's time to remove your armor. In the next three episodes, we will discuss your mindset as you approach these tasks. Where can you glean the right inspiration? How can you stay motivated and positive? We suggest you begin by taking your Master of the Internet trophy on a glory lap, rehydrating with a juice box, and giving yourself some credit for your awesome progress. <laughs>